This series of videos gives you quick exercises that you can use to get good at Blender. They're designed as challenges, so you see a model and you have to try and recreate it. They either get increasingly difficult or they introduce a new skill each time. This way you're not only learning, but you're practicing the skills. So let's start nice and easy with this model. Okay, so the very first shape to produce is this one here. Nice and simple. Pause the video and have a go at that. Okay, so hopefully you've got an echo with that. So that's Shift A to add mesh and then cylinder. We need to change the vertex count to something like eight, depending on the detail size of your low poly, but I think eight works well in this situation. Then we can go into edit mode, select the top face and just scale it in slightly for our tankard and delete that top face. So nice, easy starting point there. I'll just bring it above the ground. Let's get to front view for that with one on my numpad and we're about there. Okay, so the second shape, you need to change it into this. And I'll quickly go to my viewport shading, turn on the cavity and change it to both. So it's a little bit easier to see the topology. There you go. Okay, pause the video and have a go at that. So hopefully you've gotten okay with that. I'll duplicate the first shape. So shift D and bring it across in the X axis and again into edit mode. So to create these two extrusions, I'm going to press control R to do a loop cut around the middle. Use the wheel of my mouse to create two and left click and left click once again. So you left click, to set the amount of loop cuts and left click again to set the position. And you can change the position here and things like that if you need to. If you have moved it by accident, then you can change this back to zero. Now you'll see there's a little bit of difference in the position of these to my splits here. So I can select the top one, GG to edge slide that up and the bottom one, GG to edge slide that down. Select both of them and control B to bevel. Now notice I've got lots of cuts. That's the wheel of my mouse changing those. And I'll bring it down to just the two there and left click. So in terms of segments, it's actually one. Now from here, I need to extrude them outwards, but I need to get to the extrude menu. You do that by pressing Alt E to get to the extrude menu and then extrude faces along normals. That way they'll go out from the face direction, which we can see there. And I have just about mimicked this shape. What I have done though, is added a tiny little bit of variation to this. So if I go to face mode and select this face loop up the top here, press control plus to grow my selection. You can see how it's selected the other pieces there. And I could perhaps rotate this slightly, maybe scale it in slightly so it looks like it's squeezing the mesh and do a similar thing for these. So control plus, maybe rotate those really slightly the other way. I'll come around to here as well, rotate. And I think that looks quite nice. So a tiny bit of variation there. You could even press R to rotate in the Z axis, hold down shift so it just goes in a small increment so it only moves slightly and then have a little bit of twist to it like that adding a tiny bit of distortion. That little bit of distortion, variation, wobbliness is really effective for giving things that non-digital look. Okay, so there's a slight difference in the top as well. I've extruded the top out and pulled it down. So if I go to edge mode 2, select the top face, E to extrude and S to scale. So E then S, bring that in slightly somewhere around there and E to extrude downwards. And I come to front view, Alt Z for wireframe to see where the bottom is, G to grab in the Z, bring that down to about there, I guess, and maybe scale it out a little bit as well. So there's some width. Alt said to go back to solid view, and we got the basics of our tankard there. Okay, so we're moving on nicely. How about adding a basic handle to our tankard? Now there's lots of ways of doing this, and some are more optimal than others, but just do it in what you see as the simplest way possible. If you like the style of learning, you might be interested in one of my courses, or if you're dreaming of a career in 3D art, my eight week intensive program takes you from absolute beginner to indie studio ready in just two months. You'll learn essential skills, build up a strong portfolio and be ready to launch your 3D art career. There's limited spots available and you can find out more in the link in the description. Okay, now this wasn't a trick. I'll select my first one, Shift D to duplicate and across in the X axis. And what I've actually done is this is just a separate object digging into the other one. Now, the reason I've done this, I know we're supposed to be looking at topology and getting good at Blender, but this is kind of part of getting good at Blender. When do you overlap objects like this? And when do you make them out of the same object? Now, this tiny little overlap here is not going to make a huge amount of difference at all. It looks absolutely fine, especially with this low poly style. It will make absolutely minimal difference in a game. So in my mind, it's easier just to make it as a different object. Of course, don't feel bad if you decided to inset some of these faces, extrude out and join them up. That's absolutely fine as well. But I think it's quicker not to do that. Also, you could start with a curve, get the shape, add a bevel to the curve, convert it to a mesh, making sure, of course, that you get the right number of faces going around the curve. So there's actually quite a lot of steps to that as well. 
The easiest way is just to shift right click, shift A to add. You could start with a cube and then divide it once you've got the shape, or you could start with a cylinder with a low face count. We'll go for six this time. Come to front view, scale it down, rotate it around, somewhere around here. Into edit mode, Alt Z, face mode, select that end face, and you can hold down control and right click to extrude out in a pathway like so. And we've got a really basic shape there. I'll press Alt Z again and see what that looks like. It's probably a little bit chunky and fat. So I can press A to select all and Alt S will scale by the normal. And I can bring it in a bit to somewhere around here. And there we've got a nice simple handle. I've actually got one more cut on this one than I have on this one. It's also very uniform as well. I don't actually like my low poly objects to be nice and uniform. I like them to have a bit of wobbliness. So I'll go to edge mode, Alt left click, let's go to front view, G to grab, and just move these around a little bit. Could even scale one down, scale one up, rotate one around the Z axis maybe, just to add a little bit of distortion to the shape. And there we've got, I'll just move my 3D cursor, a simple handle. I'll do a little bit of adjustment actually. I'm going to select this face loop and move it up slightly. And then this one out slightly. I think that's a bit better. And now it looks a little bit thin actually. So let's go to face mode and Alt S and then scale them back out slightly. I think that's looking okay. I could even go slightly wider than they are thicker. So scale in the Y this time. So there we go, nice easy approach there. Now one thing you might want to watch out for are tiny little overlaps like this and where it doesn't quite connect particularly well. So I'd probably want to maybe select this face loop in here and move that into position a little bit more and maybe rotate it so it digs in. In fact, let's get rid of this edge loop here. Control X will dissolve an edge loop like that. And then it's inserting into this metal bit going around here a bit better. And the same for the top one. I'll just adjust this so it fits into that metal piece a bit better. And I'll speed that footage up because it's just me tinkering. And there we go. So again, keeping it nice and simple, nice quick modeling, especially if you're making lots of game assets, you need to be quite quick with these things. Okay, so what about number four here? Notice it's got lots of notches and things like that. Have a good look around, see what I've done, and see if you can mimic some of those notches and crevices and things like that to give it a bit of character. Pause the video and have a go at that. I'll keep rotating around so you can see all the different notches and things. Okay, so hopefully gone okay with that. Let's get my two previous ones and duplicate them and bring them across. And one of the first things I did was I reduced the outside loop of faces of these kind of metal supports here. I'll show you what that looks like. So into edit mode with this shape, face mode with three, select this outside face and then scale in the Z. I'm gonna bring them in very slightly as well. Now you see that more of a chamfer, this sort of slight bevel, that's actually more visually appealing than this very flat looking shape here. It's really common that you'll see that in low poly modeling, a kind of lack of these obvious right angles like this. So you'll tend to see more of this sort of chamfered beveled look. And I'll just bring that one in slightly. It does mean my handle's really slightly out. I'm not going to worry too much about that though. Okay, so how do I do things like the notches? Well, if I go to edge mode and select something like this top edge here, I can press control B to bevel bring that out, and then I can press delete on these faces. Go in, select this edge here and press F to fill, and that fills in that face there and F to fill, and we've got a simple notch. So I can do that in a couple of places, maybe here and here would look good. Control B to bevel, delete those faces, and then again, F and then F, and F and then F, and we've got some notches. Now we want to add a bit of variation, so I'll press G then Z and bring this one down a little bit further, and this one, G then G again in this case, and I'll bring that across slightly. Looking at the other one, they've got slight protrusions like this. So let's take these two and press E to extrude like so. And then this one E to extrude and bring that down slightly. I feel like I need a bevel in here as well, actually, but it's a little bit awkward to put a bevel in at this point. So I'll undo that and let's put a bevel in there first. So control B to bevel, delete those faces and fill those in. And I'll bring this down a little bit, G then Z and then go to face mode, E to extrude, and I'll just bring this one up a bit higher, so G then Z. And I'll scale it down very really slightly, and this one as well. So it looks like they're pieces of wood that are sticking out that little bit further, and that looks great. So that's a few notches and things like that. I feel like we need one more. Let's go to town a little bit on these notches. 
Control B to bevel, bring that out slightly less and delete the faces and then fill them in. And then select this one, G the crab, and then in the Z. And we've got a nice split there. And I think that's looking quite nice. Okay, there's a few things like notches just here as well. You can see my lines are a little bit closer for these, so I could change that if I want to. So go into this object, into edit mode, select this edge loop here and GG to edge slide, just to add some variation. That might work. You might want it more even, that's no problem. You can select a vertex and bevel that. To bevel a vertex, you press Control and Shift then B. And you can bring out a vertex like that. And we probably want to select these two and join them together. And it creates a kind of notch like this as if it's been bashed. You can also bevel an edge if you want as well, just to add some variation. You don't really need to delete the faces and fill them in, but you could do in this case. So I'll delete the faces, fill them in. And we've got a bashed bit there that it's taken a chunk of the metal out of. We can do the same on our cup here on some of the extremities of the metal going around. So once again, into vertex mode, select a vertex and control shift B. And that creates that sort of notch like that. I'll do another one down here, control shift B, bring it out just a touch and then maybe slide one of these across. So GG to slide it across to create a different sort of looking notch. And lastly, you might've noticed I've actually added a bevel to the bottom there. Again, this really harsh right angle here just looks a little bit hard edged. At the top, we get away with it because we've got lots of variation in the shape, but here it's very hard and rigid. So again, into edit mode, into edge mode, select the bottom edge with control left click and control B to bevel and just create a bit of softness like that. And there we have it, a cool low poly tankard. Okay, so hopefully you got an okay with that and you learned a few things, particularly about low poly modeling. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.